family um yeah i'm still here i just wanted to show y'all something real quick um while i'm out here working i told y'all in the beginning when i first started my channel that i was going to show you all the good the bad the ugly i'm not trying to glamorize anything um i haven't really been on just because of time and really there's not a whole lot to show but i'm going to show you what i'm talking about um like i said you know good bad ugly when I say ugly, I mean aesthetically. Um, everything dealing with the garden, everything dealing with growing is beautiful, um, even when things get neglected. So I'm gonna show you all the effects of neglect in the garden, and then I'll explain to you like what my focus has been um, this season, because my focus has been a lot different this year than it has been in previous years. Um, so I just wanna kinda go over that with you, just show you what I've been doing, what I've been dealing with, and you know, hopefully y'all will get something from this video. All right, hold on fam. All right, so these are my annual beds. Like, oh my God, V8. Look at the weeds and grass and crazy stuff growing in it. Like, what the heck are you doing, dude? So these have been, I'm not gonna lie, these have been neglected, you know, because of time, but also because I've spent a lot of time this year observing what's going on. We do have some things going though. We got some lettuces that I'm letting go to seed. I mean, these were actually pretty good. Um, we have some beans here that I just cut down yesterday. Um, those are nitrogen fixes. You gotta cut your nitrogen fixes in order to get the nitrogen to, re to release. Um, we got some zinnias. Now these zinnias are um, zinnias that, well, I had bought a zin one zinnia plant last year and harvested the seeds. And it's so interesting how the zinnias will come out different colors. See, we got some hot, some hot red. We got some, I guess that's considered purple or hot pink. We got some more zinnias here that are still growing. But um, the zinnias, you know, they were, I can't remember what color they were yes, I mean, last year, but it's just interesting how, you know, genetics work. But we do have some melons growing here, you know, so we'll see what happens with those. We got some brassicas going over there, some melons in there as well. But there's a lot of weeds, a lot of grass. And it's because, like I said, I kind of neglected the beds this year um, because I've been observing the land. I've been observing the uh, soils. I've been observing pests. And here's one, that one. These are, I don't know what these things are called, but they look like Japanese beetles, but they're way bigger. If y'all know what those are called, let me know. This is my annual bed with my asparagus and my uh, strawberries growing in here. I got some comfy growing in here as well. As far as the annual beds are concerned, I have, like I said, been observing and I've realized that we've got some issues that we have to take care of. So I've just been kind of watching. Uh, again, I've been kind of pressed for time you know, due to work and different things going on. Me and, uh, me and Honey Bee have been doing a whole lot of camping. And I'll talk about that in another video. We've been doing tent camping, cabin camping. Um, so I didn't really get a chance to really pay attention to, you know, taking care of the weeds in here, but you know, it is what it is. You know, it, it's not a great thing, but it's not an awful thing. You know, when you have green popping up in your soils, one of the great things about it is that it's, producing 
uh, what's called root exudates through photosynthesis. So, I mean, at least I know the soil life is getting fed, but, you know, again, we got some issues. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. And then I'll tell you what I've actually been focused on this year. So if you look here, and I apologize about the noise and about the camera moving, this, if y'all do know what this is or don't know what this is, this is called Tree of Heaven. And if you can look at all the bright greenish, yellowish patches here, it's popping up everywhere. It's very invasive. This is a full grown tree. And because it's all, these are all Tree of Heaven, they should be called Tree of Hell. They're everywhere, they're everywhere. The bad thing about those things is that on top of them being invasive, they also produce a chemical that prohibits the growth of other plants around it. So not only have I had to deal with the black walnut that I cut down earlier in the year, I also have this crazy invasive tree of heaven that I have to figure out a way to deal with. It's, it's everywhere, it's gotten in my beds, it's gotten around my plants, and I've really seen the effects of it this year. So that's one of the things that I am going to have to try to figure out a solution for. Um, I'm going to show you something else as well. All right, now this looks crazy, but it's not crazy. This is my comfrey patch. This is where I'm able to harvest comfrey. I actually just cut all of this back yesterday, so it looks crazy. Some of it I left in the bed to kind of replenish the soil here. And some of it I put around my plants in other areas to try to build up soil and encourage um, you know the soil life but the issue that I wanted to show you is this these are my blueberries we also can see this issue here and y'all probably know exactly what it is I mentioned it a little while ago Japanese beetles they have been on a rampage this year and you know they come every year they usually attack my Japanese, I mean, my uh, my crepe myrtle, which is what this is. But they are no joke. They have been tearing stuff up. They've been all in my asparagus. Um, you know, what I've been doing is knocking them into water, soapy water, and, you know, just kind of hoping that I can get enough of them. Because, I mean, I probably, no lie, have gotten at least like 500 that I've gotten rid of. I'm hoping that I can kind of reduce their population it's funny with japanese beetles they um it's all they do is mate and eat they just mate and eat and they mate and they eat while they're mating i mean they they're wild so i've been kind of catching them mid-stroke you know what i'm saying and dumping them into the water and hopefully that'll kind of reduce the population um but we'll see i'm gonna show you another issue i'm showing you all of this for a reason all right i don't know if you can see that clear but that's a hole and that is a hole produced by a gopher. So we've got gopher issues here. Um, there's holes everywhere. And we've had gophers and groundhogs and things like that, but this year it's been especially crazy. And I think it's because, you know, there's been a lot more going on here this year than in previous years. And I'll show you what I'm talking about in that regard as well. But there's just holes everywhere. And I think that the reason that these uh, tree of hell sprouts have been coming up so vigorously and so crazy this year is because of the gophers and groundhogs. These things reproduce by way of rhizomes. And when you have a, a plant that reproduces by rhizome, any disturbance or breaking or, you know, you can push it over and it'll just start shooting stuff up. So I think that that's the reason that there's so much of this coming up because of the gophers and groundhogs. Now, I don't want to keep cutting the camera, but I apologize for um, the movement. One of the effects that these gophers and groundhogs have had this year, and this is partially why, this is another reason why these beds have gone kind of neglected. They've been tearing my stuff up. You know, they're good for aerating, but when you have an invasive plant that spreads by rhizomes, that's it becomes a problem. It becomes an issue. But they tore up my stuff. I'm gonna see if I can find the pictures that I had of the beets that I had growing. I mean, I had a lot, we had a lot of beets and I'm grateful for that. We had a lot of radishes, um, but they ate up a lot of the beets, a lot of the radishes. 
I had a beat that was probably, and actually it was a few of them, probably about the size of, almost the size of softballs. And they would tear those things up. So a lot of the beats that I've had to harvest this year, we've had to pull them up a little early to prevent them from getting to them. Um, a few of them, they were so big and juicy, it was like when I pulled them up because I knew that they had gotten to them, you can still see the juice, the deep red juice of the beets just dripping, dripping out of the beet. And so that was so upsetting. It was like they would leave me the smaller ones and take the huge ones. I guess they'd leave me the smaller ones to encourage me to keep growing them so they can come back and eat them. But that's been another issue that we've been dealing with. Also, um, they ate up stuff like I had uh, rhubarb. They was eating the rhubarb. I have one here that's on the struggle bus left. As you can see, this one is fairly young. And I noticed the other day that the leaves started turning colors. Now, I don't know if it's because of where we are in the season or if, you know, the uh, underground warriors have gotten to this one as well. I'm just going to leave it and kind of see what happens. But I'm going to show you all something else and then we'll get into what I've actually been kind of focused on. Now, this, this is the, the, the patch of land. I don't know if you all remember, um, but we had a patch where we had patches we were working on where I had cars sitting here for years and the soil had been totally depleted. I mean, it was just dry. It was, you know, awful. But this is what I've been working on as well. As you can see, we got some squash growing here. This is going to be where I'm going to plant a tree. I'm just kind of preparing this area for now. I'll let this sit for a few months. I'll keep on building up the soil and I'll put a tree here. I'll still probably grow some annuals, but I wanted to get some photosynthesis pumping in this area. So we got stuff growing. We got some melons and things like that. So I, I bring this up because one of the things that I've observed is that we have to work on building up the soil in a lot of the areas on my property. And that's really what I've been focused on, building up soil. We've been making a lot of compost. We've been making a lot of compost tea. We've been making a lot of uh, comfrey teas, dandelion teas, and just kind of feeding the soil. We got um, eggshells and coffee grounds and food scraps and things like that that we've been putting down here just to try to build things up. So we'll show you one other thing and then we'll close this out. All right, so this is what I've actually been focused on. You know, with the time that I do have, um, I've really been focused on my annuals, my trees, um, this here is a Peter's honey. It's still a baby. Um, it looks a little sad because I cut cut it back yesterday. Um, so I think it's a little upset with me. But that's a Peter's honey. This is a Desert King. This is a Chicago Hardy. And this one is actually producing one little fig. Um, I'm not really expecting a whole lot from these. They're all babies. Most of these trees that I have here are, um, they were started as cuttings. This one is a, an Olympia. I just cut back on this one yesterday too. This is an Olympia. Let's see, roll with me for a minute. We've got, oh, right here. We have a baby LSU gold. We have another baby LSU gold here. This is a big comfrey that the beetles have been getting to. This is the bed where, oh, and we got a little, we got some basil growing in a few of the beds. We got, we, I did plant some herbs. So we got basil, we've got oregano going out, growing out here. We got uh, mint, but um, this is the bed where I did have that uh, rhubarb that the stinking underground warrior got to. Here's another baby fig tree that we started from a cutting. We got another one here. This is a this is called a yellow long neck. This one is kind of struggling, and I'm wondering if you know there was some disturbance to the roots by the uh, underground warrior on this as well but we'll wait and see what happens we got a i think this one is a black madeira fig tree we got a celeste over here this is the celeste that our brother from south georgia figs blessed me with last year 
So this one is coming up. We got comfrey around it. And this is, I was telling you that I was dropping comfrey around my plants. We got the pawpaws here. There's one there and one there that are looking pretty good. But again, we got this tree of heaven that I got to cut back. And I have to be careful with it because, you know, they've been popping up in my beds as well. Like here's one right here that popped up in the bed. And like I said, they produce a chemical that's dangerous. Right here we have, this is an aronia. Now, if you look right there, there's a hole where the underground warrior drilled in. So I don't know how that's gonna affect it. I don't know if it messed with the roots, but we'll see. But that's one of three aronia that we have out here. This is the oregano that I have going to seed because I want oregano everywhere. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. This is a, this fig here is a, uh, a uh, Ronde Bordeaux. It had leaves on it, but when I transplanted it, it dropped it, its leaves, but it's sprouting some new stuff. So we'll watch that and see what happens. This is a bed, this is one of two beds that I'm just kind of preparing for another tree that I plant um, in the dormant season. So I'm just kind of preparing the soil um, we got wood chips up here. You know, I put cardboard down around this one to try to keep some of the weeds out. Um, we got comfrey that we dropped here just for nutrients. I'll keep dropping comfrey here and I'll let this sit until it's, you know, until I get ready to uh, transplant. This is, and sorry about the traffic noise. This is a Viola de Bordeaux. We dropped comfrey around it. There's some more, here's some basil here tree of heaven or tree of hell we got comfrey growing around it and this is pretty much what i've been focused on this right here is i think these are the um the ground cherries or the, the uh, cape gooseberries that i planted that came up kind of late they came up later than you know what i was hoping for so i'm not really expecting much from this but i'm just gonna let it grow here like I said, any green growing that you have in your planting area is photosynthesis, which means food for your soil life and food for your plants, ultimately. We got a little bush cherry here. This is the Romeo. Eventually, I'll get another one. Now, this the elephant ears popped up. I actually uh, dug this out last year. I guess I left a little piece, but they uh, kind of came up out of nowhere, which is cool. I just, I heard that um, elephant ears and taro may be different. If y'all know about that, let me know. We also got the blues. Now we did harvest quite a few blueberries this year. Um, this one, I think this is the pink lemonade. This one didn't produce anything, but the, uh, the Jersey blueberry, I don't know what this one, this is the one I used to call the struggle berry, but this one produced quite a bit. And actually it looks like it's still producing. I thought that these were the same varieties. I thought it was a Jersey, but that Jersey blue back there actually produced really big blueberries. This one is producing small ones, so, and they taste different. So they're two different varieties. I just don't know what they are, but they're productive, which is cool. But anyway, I'm sweating because I've been working and recording kind of at the same time. Um, I just wanted to show y'all, you know, the effects of neglect you know, but it's, like I said, a lot of it is just me kind of observing, you know, the issues that have to be addressed out here. As far as the gophers and the groundhogs and things like that, what's the solution to that? I have no clue. I don't know. I don't want to put poison down. What I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to plant like around the things that I want to keep. I'm going to plant a lot of garlic because we did harvest a lot of garlic. We harvested a lot of uh, green onions. We got some carrots. Um, I got one little purple ca carrot, which was cool. Um, but I'm gonna plant a lot of garlic and um, daffodils and hope, excuse me, I'm all sweaty, but, and hopefully, you know, that'll deter them from, you know, going past the borders of garlic and daffodil because they put out an unpleasant odor. Um, and I'll see if that works. If not, then, you know, we'll try to attack it a different way. Um, if y'all have some non-poisonous solutions, you know, let me know. I may have to get a trap ultimately. As far as the uh, tree of heaven, 
I think the only thing that I can do with that is just kind of uh, carefully pick those out as they're small. And I'm gonna seat mount a lot of the area where I put cardboard down, cover it up, you know, around like a wide span of area that I want to grow in. And hopefully they won't grow through that. We'll see. But that's been an issue. And I think that it has been affecting the growth of a lot of the things that I have out here. But we'll see. I'll take you along on that journey. Um, as far as the Japanese beetles, you know, like I said, just keep killing them mid-stroke. I know that they have a, um, there's a hormone that's out, like a hormone trap that's out. And I might look into that as well. But, you know, they're, they've been problematic this year. And as far as my soil is concerned, I'm just going to keep building, you know, keep making compost, keep making compost teas. Um, I don't like calling them weed teas because comfrey and dandelion, I mean, not dandelions, but uh, yeah, dandelions. I, I look at those more as herbs. So I keep making herbal teas and just keep trying to build up the soil. And, um, you know, hopefully, because the, those types of solutions are, they're gradual. So hopefully it'll get to the point where I'm able to just kind of, you know, stick my finger in the soil and grow whatever I want. Sort of like T Nog. Y'all know how T Nog is. She grows everything and anything. But um, yeah. I mean, the, the thing about this year that is cool is that I can see where what I have been focused on, it's been changing the landscape. And I've noticed that there's a lot more um, insects that I've not seen before. There's a lot more insects that I have seen that have been in more abundance. Like there's a lot of dragonflies out here. You can see them hunting down those mosquitoes, which is cool. There's a lot of different birds that I've seen this year that I hadn't seen last year. So those are all good signs. Um, I also have, I noticed that we actually have uh, clover growing here naturally, which is cool. Um, I've got white clover. I have red clover that I realize is growing here naturally as well. I actually planted some uh, crimson clover. Clover is a nitrogen fixer, but the good thing about that is I noticed that we have like a family of rabbits out here, but they haven't really messed with my stuff. I think they might have eaten like one or two strawberries, which was fine because the strawberries produced like crazy this year. We did harvest a lot of strawberries, but they generally go for the clover. So I guess they fill their be bellies on clover. They leave my stuff alone for the most part, and then they drop their little poops. And you know, that's been going into compost. So that's been cool. I just got to figure out these gophers and groundhogs and things like that. But anyway, I'm not going to keep y'all any longer. I got more work to do. Um, if y'all have solutions for any of these issues I brought up, let me know, especially that tree of heaven thing. Um, but I appreciate y'all coming and I promise there'll be more. All right. Peace, man.